One of my favorite modifications that I've done to my 2020 Civic Asai has been the MA Performance catted down pipe. I also got their uh, front pipe with it, but the front pipe doesn't really do anything. So in this video, I'm gonna have tons of sound clips, uh, just like the ones you just heard. Also inside, uh, outside the car, full throttle acceleration. So you guys can really hear how the downpipe changes the sound of the car at around like 3,700, 4,000 RPM. It's, it's crazy, it makes a totally different sound than before. So the first thing I wanna talk about is, with a catted downpipe on the 10th gen Civic, 1.5 turbo, do you have to tune your car to run a catted downpipe? The answer is no, but yes. First thing I wanna get out of the way is that pretty much all of the downpipes for this car are exactly the same, okay? There are going to be people who are commenting saying uh, this one's better than that one. Dude, look at them. Look at the pictures. Look at the materials used to make the downpipes. They're all the same. They're all going to make the same sound. They're all going to have the same power increase. My MA Performance catted downpipe side by side, it's gonna be the same exact thing as the PRL catted downpipe. So now that we understand that, we can use PRL's blog for the research and development as a reference because MA Performance doesn't tell us any numbers. So when you go to buy this uh, downpipe off maperformance.com, I'll tell you my recommendation towards the end of the video, but they don't tell us any numbers, like they don't tell us any power gains, which is sort of weird. You, you'd think that, you know, even on the stock tune, there would be some power gains, which there are. So if you go to PRL's blog, where they created the intercooler for the 1.5 turbo Civics, including the SI, they have all the information, all the testing, research and development information on their Cobra cold air intake, their intercooler, and the downpipe, the catted downpipe for this car. So when PRL was doing their testing, they did not use a tuner. It was on the stock tune. I will repeat that. It was on the stock tune, no K tuner, no Honda they were able to make 216 horsepower to the wheels. So that is a huge improvement over their baseline pull. Talking specifically about the downpipe, how much power did it make? PRL advertises that for their catted downpipe, you will have a peak gain of 10 horsepower and 17 wheel torque. And then you'll have as much as 12 horsepower and 20 pound-feet of torque throughout the mid-range, which is excellent. I mean, that's for on the stock tune. That's a phenomenal gain. So. Now we get into, do you need a tuner to run this downpipe, to run these downpipes for the cars? Because like I said, they're all pretty much the same. I mean, come on. So you can run this safely without a tune. You can run this safely without a K-Tuner or Honda, and it's going to make that extra power. Uh, it's gonna sound great, and the car's not gonna run crappy, okay? It's gonna run okay. When I bought this downpipe, nowhere on the website did I see that you had to run a K-Tuner, that you had to run a tuner with this downpipe. Let me show you something. And look at that down there. Even though I've checked the box to disable that emissions light in my K-Tuner software, that emissions light is still on. It went away for a little bit, then it came back on, then it went away for a little longer, and it, it comes and goes whenever it wants. And I don't know why. So it's just really annoying how the emissions light is on because it has, uh, you know, obviously it has the light down there and it also has one right there, which is just, it's kind of obnoxious actually. I'm running the Fearable Stage 1.5 tune with K-Tuner version two. So also here's something I found on Derek Robinson's Instagram. You guys should know who Derek Robinson is by now. He is probably the most popular tuner for Hondas of all generations. 8th gen, 9th gen, 10th gen SI, CBT, and Type R, he does everything. I highly recommend following Derek Robinson on Instagram right here because he posts just about every car that he tunes and he lists the modifications that it had and uh, the final numbers that it was able to produce. So I found this right here. This car, it's a 2020 SI, has a Cobra intake, a catted downpipe, just like I do, uh, with the included front pipe, intercooler with the piping, just like I do, uh, it had a flex fuel kit, and then a front pipe back exhaust. And on 93 octane, he was able to produce 252 wheel horsepower and 304 wheel torque on 93 octane. And yes, I only have 91 octane here in Northern California, but, the Fearable Tune was created using 93 octane, and the way that you can get the same effect of having 93 octane pump gas is by adding 1.5 gallons of E85, about 1.5 gallons, give or take, to a full tank of 91. So, 
I probably am putting down something just shy of 252 because again, this is Derek. He tuned the SI for 93 octane. When you get a tune, when you get a custom tune with the mods that you have, it's gonna be a little more effective than running an off the shelf tune like TSB Stage 1 or Fearable Stage 1.5 with your bolt ons. So I don't know, I'm probably at a healthy like 245 ish, maybe 250. So basically, you can expect to be somewhere around those power numbers with similar mods as me or similar mods as this car here. All right, let's get some more sound clips. I rolled down the passenger window. I'm gonna try to drive with one hand. Holy crap, that Accord is going way too fast. That guy looked at me like, why are you filming me, brother? I'm actually gonna put Rev Hang back on. I prefer most of the time to drive with Rev Hang on. For those who still don't know, when you have a K-Tuner, you can turn Rev Hang on and off. performance street exhaust which I absolutely love but I cannot I cannot in good faith recommend you to purchase that exhaust right now because as of right now MA performance prices on their products are absolutely uh, through the roof it's ridiculous their pricing right now I love the MA performance street exhaust and I actually have grown to love the four the quad tips exhaust there was a little bit of drone I mean I think mostly it was just it was just that the exhaust uh, you couldn't hear it stock and then now you could hear it with the with the street exhaust but with the downpipe there was definitely a noticeable you know like once you get up to um, 80 miles an hour on the highway especially with the 2020 because of the shorter gearing when you're at 80 miles an hour in the 2020 you are at like 32 3300 rpm versus um, the 17 through 19 SIs where you're at 3000 RPM. The new gearing kind of, mm, I don't like it. I like the gearing in the, the 17 to 19s. But is the drone that bad? No, absolutely not. Would I trade my downpipe back for a stock downpipe? Absolutely not. I love this exhaust setup. If anything, it could be louder. If anything, I could have gotten a Catless downpipe, which ultimately, I have to say, I think my recommendation is going to be a catless downpipe for the 10th gens. And the reason for that is, yes, I felt great power increase with my catted downpipe, an awesome sound increase, but it could be a little louder. I wish I would have gone catless. I could have registered this in main. I'm, I'm trying to sell it right now anyway. Otherwise, maybe I would switch to a, to a catless and get this registered in main so I didn't have to spunk. Okay, so now let's talk about pricing. I recommend right now, if you want to buy uh, a downpipe for your 10th gen, I would buy from PRL or I would buy PRL uh, through maperformance.com. I actually have a referral link that I've had in my description for like the past year from MA Performance. And if you're a first time customer, you can get a, uh, you can get a little discount. PRL has great prices and great products. I also have their intercooler. But anyway, before I talk your guys' ears off anymore, I'm gonna give you some exterior clips.
All right, with Vivian's help, we're gonna get some exterior clips. Uh, both like 50% throttle and wide open throttle outside the car. So I'm gonna go make Vivian awkwardly stand on the side of the road while I floor it by her. So this is for my downpipe review. Do you even know what that is? Yeah. Dear passenger, please fasten your seatbelt. from Vivian. That <laughs> sounded cool. That's exactly the way I would describe it too. It had like a little... A little that pops? One. Yeah. So that was with rev hang off. If you have rev hang on, I'll put rev hang on here right now, it's gonna sound different. Inside the car, we're gonna hear mostly the intake and the downpipe. Yeah, this car compared to the ninth gen, just so much nicer. Yeah, it's way nicer of a car. Well, no, just I the, really the wish, sound alone. I really wish I could afford to have two car payments, and then I would just have this car and I'd get something else. It's like something else really cool and newer. But like, how cool? Really cool. <laughs> well, if I put it in one, it lights up your face. Yeah, I will be doing a comparison video before I get before I sell this uh, of the ninth gen versus the tenth gen. I mean, it's, it doesn't help that ninth gen's cause that I have a salvage one, but I did have a clean title ninth gen, so I have some memories of what a clean title ninth gen is like. Not that there's too many differences. I mean, the only thing really wrong with mine is that the interior smells like a dead body, but pretty much everything about the 10th gen is better. Which one's faster, babe? I feel like it's this car. Definitely this car, yeah. Those are my specs. So the knock control is at 0.49 because I do, I did add 1.5 gallons of E85 in my last uh, fill up. And then the IAT2 down here, that's actually the intercooler temps, post intercooler. So intercooler is definitely doing its job. You think I should keep this car and push it further and probably blow it up? Uh, or do you think I should continue with my plan of selling this and then getting like a Subaru WRX or an STI or Type R or something like that? Stick with the plan. Because right now you have equity in this car and if you blow it up, you ain't got squat. So that concludes my downpipe review. I highly recommend getting uh, either a catted or catless downpipe for your 10th gen. The smell with the catless downpipe on the 10th gen is not that bad. You will, you obviously will notice more of a smell, but in my opinion, it smells good. So I did a review of my friend Dakota's car months and months ago, and he has the CNT catless downpipe. Uh, going to the Type R exhaust on his uh, SI sedan. And it sounded great. And the tension with the Catless downpipe reminds me of the smell of a snowmobile. And if you guys have ever smelled a snowmobile, it smells really good. I don't know what it is about the, you know, the technicalities of it, but it just smells really good. And with the catted downpipe, like the one I have, the only time you're going to smell the exhaust gases are gonna be when you're standing behind the car when it's idling, when it's on. So it's really not that bad, I highly recommend it. 
Would it be my first bolt-on modification? No. Uh, first and foremost, I, I always recommend people starting off with the Cobra Cold Air Intake, the PRL Cobra Cold Air Intake. And then second, I would get an intercooler even before you get tuned. If you do choose to get tuned, I mean, it's going to be the best bang for your buck. But anyway, I'm getting into something else. I'm getting into another video that I'm that I'm going to make. I'm going to make like a modification guide for beginners uh, that is coming next. That's all I have. If you haven't entered the KTNR giveaway, we're up to about 57, 58 entries. And I will do the drawing on uh, in the morning of December 19th and then immediately go mail it out to the winner. So... Uh, all the details are in the description, but thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. We should go to? Well, this is a pretty busy street. I'll go scope out another street. I think I have an idea of where we can go.